Good morning. We're so glad that you're here today as we start our, our Advent journey. This is the, the beginning of the church year. It's an Advent that we prepare ourselves for the, the coming of Christmas, but also for the, the coming of the kingdom of God into our world. We reflect on who we are and who God is calling us to be. And this is a season of growth in trusting God's promises and his love for you and for me. We're so glad that you're here as we make our Advent journey. Uh, we'll begin by lighting our Advent candle. And uh, each Sunday, as we go towards Christmas Eve, we'll light part of the candle to mark our journey. We're thankful that you're making the journey with us here at FPC and that we start today. Again, welcome. I'd at this time like to invite the Edwards family to come forward and light the Advent candle for the first Sunday in Advent. We light these candles. We light these candles in a sign of the coming light of Christ. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. Today, we light the candle of hope, remembering the promises of God in our hearts. We light this candle in hope. On this day, we bear witness to the light of Christ, with all the faithful of every time and place, with Jeremiah the prophet and Paul the apostle, we await the promised redemption of the Lord and look for Christ's coming to bring justice and righteousness to the earth. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Please join together now for our call to worship, selected from Psalm 25.
To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Do not let those who wait for you uh, be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his commandment and his decrees. Let us join together in our opening prayer. Would you pray with me? Faithful God, renew us with Advent joy so that we may prepare to celebrate Christ's coming among our families, our communities, and all the peoples of the world. As we start our journey, we gather in person and online, knowing that worship will prepare our hearts to receive God's promise of Emmanuel. God of joy and of love, tear open the darkness in our world and let the light of Christ's child shine today. Amen. I invite you now to stand and we'll sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Let's stand and sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. If we say we have no sins, then we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, our God who is merciful and just will cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. It's in the promise of this forgiveness that we can make our confession with confidence together. Would you join me? Before the light of God's presence, 
we confess that our own doubts and fears cause us to struggle and stumble. We become so worried about the future that worry poisons the joy of the moment. Our regrets from the past weigh us down from pursuing future possibilities. We seek your forgiveness, O oh Lord, and the strength to change. As we prepare to welcome the Christ child into our lives, help us to live in the possibilities of joy and love as we draw near to you each day. Amen. Now I invite you to take a moment for a, a personal confession to reflect and meditate. And I ask you to listen for God to speak to your heart this morning. friends, Christ was born in this world, came to this world to save sinners like you and like me. He took our sins and our brokenness upon his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us now greet one another at a distance by making some noise. Let's stand and greet one another. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Ellen. Please join me in prayer. Oh, holy God, we pray that you will send your spirit upon us. Open up our hearts, our minds, our very souls to your word as it is read and as it is proclaimed so that we might hear your message for our lives and our hearts today. We pray this in the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three, yet one, forevermore. Amen. Our readings today come from the book of, of Jeremiah and Paul's first letter to the, the Thessalonians. Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. The, day, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David. And he shall ex execute justice and righteousness in the land. And, those day, and in those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. And from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the third chapter. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that, ha that we feel before God because of you? Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face 
and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God, the Father himself, and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus and all the saints. We thank God for these words. Our hearts, a part of our hearts, is hurting with fear, with anger, with denial, with grief. Our hearts are also healing with gratitude and grace, mercy, love, and joy. Heaven is a season that we look inside ourselves and let go of all those things that distance us and distract us from God's joy. In Advent, we have an invitation to turn to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so that even in our losses and in our brokenness, we can have an opportunity to be renewed with joy. In Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, in our reading today, we see that Paul is renewed in joy. He's just received a, a good word about this church that he has started in Thessaloniki. It was a, a church that grew out of, of struggle. Paul first went to the synagogue and there preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some heard and believed and became Christians. Others became angry and drove them out of the synagogue. Paul also in Thessaloniki had a, a great appeal to the, uh, uh, those who were secular, those who were Gentiles. Some heard the good news of Jesus and learned for the first time about the, the living God. Paul has got a good report and he has a sense of joy because he knew that they were struggling and hurting. Some, as I said, had been kicked out of the synagogue. Those Gentiles that had become Christians had been ostracized from their families, cut off from the, the Roman festivals, and now were feeling distance and the pain of loss, the pain of separation, the pain of ostracization. I imagine Paul could have thought that his little church was crumbling, but now he has got a report. Timothy has visited them and come to him and told them that they are thriving in love and that they are building one another up. And as he learns this wonderful news of them growing in love for God and for one another, he says that because of you, he has joy. He has joy because of others are enduring. They're struggling. They're hurting, but they're pushing forward. They're pushing forward. And sometimes the way it is for us in this holiday season, isn't it? We just had Thanksgiving and now we're looking for Christmas. All the TV, all the commercials, all of society is telling us we should be happy and joyous and moving forward. But like Paul for his little church, we may be a bit worried. And like those in the church in Thessaloniki, they can, we can also be struggling with separation and loss and, and grief of, of changes in our lives. 
Indeed, during this pandemic, all of us have experienced losses, changes, griefs, on top of our other griefs. And it would be easy for this to overpower us. But like that church so long ago, we endeavor to love one another and to lift one another up in faith. And as we lift one another and carry one another and move forward in faith, we too can in each other and in our faith together experience that same joy that Paul felt when he heard the, the good news of the, the faithfulness and the perseverance and the, the trust that they had for God and for Paul. In the passage we heard from Jeremiah, we have a, a word of good news. Jeremiah, the book, spans one of the great tragedies in the history of the people of Israel. You, you know it as the, the Babylonian exile. In 586, the Babylonians invaded and they destroyed Judah. They destroyed Jerusalem and the temple and they took the people into slavery and exile in, in Babylon. But now in this 33rd chapter of, of Jeremiah, God is telling him that God's going to do a new thing. It's going to, it's going to change direction. And God's going to bless the people. Here we see God working in loss and grief and absence to bring the people back to joy and fullness and, and hope. Again and again and again, our God directs us out of our grief and out of our fears and out of our worries to trust God and trust God's steadfast love and trust God's joy to be placed in us even in our times of struggle and our times of hurt. You see, because joy isn't just a, a pleasant feeling and it's not happiness because happiness depends on the circumstances. But joy is an inner power from God made from the grace and love of God that gives us strength to to know that it's going to be all right, even as the world seems to be falling apart, even as our lives may be broken, maybe as we've lost the most important person in our lives, God still can come into that grief and that darkness and the loss and show a light of love and a light of hope and show us the light on our opportunity for joy. No, God's joy is more than just dependent upon our feelings. It's dependent upon our trust in God and knowing that no matter what we may face, no matter what heartache, loss, and brokenness, that we don't have to, to face it alone. And it also tells us that that's not the end that we don't have to be caught there. We don't have to be trapped in our grief. We don't have to be trapped in our loss, but that God opens the door for new paths and new beginnings, new ways to, to share love and to share life and to know joy. I want to share with you a, a writing from... <clears throat> the Reverend Susan Sparks. It's unique because uh, she's a, a, a pastor and a, a stand-up comedian. I don't know what to think about that. Uh, uh, are, are all of us comedians? Are, are all the, you know, but, uh, but I like her 10 Commandments of Joy. And I want to share this with you. This is Susan Sparks. <clears throat> Commandment one, thou shall not worry Newsflash, 
Life is not a holy contract in which God promises to a calm passage. The only promise is a safe landing. Therefore, instead of asking God, why is this happening to me? Thank God for being with you. Worry or believe, you can't do both. Commandment of joy number two. Thou shalt not let anger steal your joy. The biggest thief of joy is anger. And I think I know that one. The classic example, someone did you wrong and you just won't let it go. Fine. But be clear, to accommodate all that anger, your heart has to make room. Which means things like joy get squeezed out. As the old saying goes, one, does, one who has the most influence in your life is the one you refuse to forgive. Commandment of joy number three. Thou shalt believe you deserve joy. Joy and laughter are the most important healing tools we have. Sadly, thanks to a low self-esteem, high self-doubt, and negative people in our environment, some of us don't believe we deserve to be happy. Do you? If not, why not? Is the reason true? If not, why do you carry it around? Who could you be without that excuse. Ten Commandments of Joy, number four. Thou shalt laugh with God. We were created in God's image, and we laugh and we feel joy. Therefore, laughter and joy must also be aspects of the whole of the holy. Bottom line, we are children of a God with a sense of humor. To be whole, we must be willing to share all of ourselves with God. The anger, the pain, the tears, and the laughter, it's all holy. Ten, men, ten Commandments of Joy, number five. Thou shalt pray it and say it, I'm grateful. Start your day with a prayer of gratitude. Acknowledge your blessings, then act on that gratitude. Say thank you to at least three people during your day. Preferably someone you don't know. Share a kind word, a written note of thanks, a smile. Pray it and say it. Gratitude is the Audubon to joy. I like that, the Audubon to joy. The Ten Commandments of Joy, number six. Thou shalt laugh with your neighbor. Even if your neighbor is a telemarketer, when we call and with someone, whether family, friend, or telemarketer, our worlds overlap for a split second. We share something. It's then that the differences fade and the commonalities gleam forward. Remember, you can't hate someone with whom you've laughed. The Ten Commandments of Joy, number seven. Thou shalt laugh and eat chocolate and chili peppers. All three make us feel good. Increasing oxygen from laughter, the serotonin in chocolate and the capsaicin in uh, chilies produce a boost of endorphins, nature's own happy pill. You can also do an hour on the treadmill to get the same endorphin high. But I suggest laughing while nibbling on a, a chill, dark chocolate bar. The Ten Commandments of Joy, number eight. Thou shalt be like little children. Children are said to laugh approximately 300 times a day, and adults less than 20. Somewhere between cartoons and carpools, our laughter gets lost. Spend a few minutes watching a little child squealing with laughter, eyes full of awe at everything, everyday miracles. When was the last time you laughed out loud or were awed by something wonderful? Start today. The Ten Commandments of Joy, number nine. Thou shalt lean on laughter in times of trouble. Laugh in a place of pain is the most courageous and rebellious thing you can do. That pain does not own you. It is only what you are experiencing. By tapping in your ability to laugh, you are reminding yourself and everyone around you that weeping may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning, Psalm 30. 
And finally, of the Ten Commandments of Joy, the Tenth Commandment. Thou shalt not waste any opportunity for joy. To paraphrase Irma Bombach, think of all the women on the Titanic who on that faithful night said no to dessert. It's easy to postpone joy in times of crisis or pain, but time keeps ticking. No matter where we find ourselves in life, it's still life. It's still a gift. And we must honor that gift in all that we do. Reverend Susan Sparks, Ten Commandments of Joy. Yes, in each of our hearts we have fears and brokenness and anger and grief. But also in each of our hearts we have gratitude and mercy and grace and love and an opportunity for joy. Let us each in this season of Advent and self-reflection look for joy in our lives. Follow these Ten Commandments. Embrace laughter, embrace others, embrace children, embrace the wonders of our world. And when we turn to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we then know that even in our losses and in our brokenness, and maybe because of them and because of the yous in our lives that we love because of you joy amen amen and amen in splendor bright not as a monarch but the child of Mary blameless mother mild at your great name O oh Jesus, Jesus now all knees must bend all hearts must bow all things on earth Like those in heaven shall call you Lord. Come in your holy might, we pray. Redeem us for eternal day. Defend us while we dwell below. From all assaults of our dreadful to God Creator, God the Son, and God the Spirit, three in one. Praise, honor, might, and glory be, from age to age eternally.
This is a time when we come together to share our, our joys and our concerns. We have a, a number of, of joys, but also concerns to, 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 to share today. Do you, do you, does anyone have one that they would like to share, a joy or a concern? I uh, would like to uh, uh, ask us to remember Berta uh, Crone in our prayers. Um, we know uh, Mona and Jacob who were, were married here. This is Jacob's mother, and she's experiencing uh, liver failure and as, is at a, a point where she is uh, in need of a, a liver transplant. So we want to pray for Berta that she has, has healing and has an opportunity to have that transplant. We also, we prayed a few weeks ago for a, a little premature baby born, uh, Walter. He was out of the hospital, but he is continuing to have problems. He, they believe that he is aspirating and it's causing breathing problems for him. So we want to continue to pray for, for baby Walter and, and uh, his, uh, his mom particularly. We're so thankful that uh, uh, Georgiana uh, Jones is, is home. Uh, she went through her course of antibiotics in the hospital. She has come home with oxygen, but uh, hopefully this will be a, a, a temporary thing that as she continues to heal and grow stronger, we'll be able to uh, let that go and, and be with us. And of course, we are so thankful today that, that Ruth uh, Musket is with us, and we're so glad to have you, Ruth, from uh, being in the hospital for your, your back and the, the disc or the vertebra. We uh, also want to keep uh, Candy in our prayers as she battles breast cancer. She now has, uh, uh, has met with her surgeon and is moving forward to have the, the cancer removed. It will happen hopefully early this next month. Uh, they have a date, but we'll, we're, we're praying that it will come through and, and uh, go well. Are there any other messages that you'd like to share today with everyone? Let's come together in prayer. Oh Lord, in this season of hustle and bustle, of online shopping and, and lines at cash registers, Lord, give us some space to breathe and reflect and to commune with you. Lord, hush all the busyness all the worries all the distractions and let us turn to you and to your way of of love and support and wholeness and hope lord we pray as we move in this advent season that you'll give us a time of reflection a time to look inside and see what is separating us from you and from one another? And then hand that over to you. And Lord, let you mold us and shape us. Just like the, the potter's hands, Lord, we ask that you will take us and mold us into the people that you want us to be. We know just like the potter, we have imperfections, but that you, Lord, we trust you can work with us and make us better. Make us whole and make us beautiful in your love and in your mercy. Lord, we pray that we will let you take us and hold us and shape us in this season so that we might be instruments of your service and of your kingdom. Lord, we have so many things that call our attention in this season, so many products and, and people. Lord, let us refocus on our priorities of, of faith and of, of mission and of caring for the least of these. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will use us to bring a little bit more joy into the world in this time. Use our hands and our feet, our voices, our thoughts, our very selves to, to make a difference for others in our families and among our friends, here in Florissant and in Hazelwood and in our community of St. Louis. Help us, Lord, to trust that you are 
bringing joy into the world. And in our days today, it's you're using us to bring joy to, to others. Lord, today we pray for those that need your care and your healing touch. We pray that you'll be with Berta. Help her to be patient as she waits for a liver. And we pray, Lord, that soon one will be available for her, that she might have this transplant that they believe that she needs. Be with Mona and Jacob, the whole family, as they surround her with love in this time of waiting. And Lord, we ask that you be with baby Walter and her mother. Help those who are caring for him, the physicians and doctors, nurses, all those who, to try to find out what is causing these wrong, lung and breathing problems. If it is aspiration, that they might have a solution and a way to help him to, to develop to wholeness and health. Lord, we're so thankful that Georgiana is home and we pray that soon she'll be off oxygen and, and be breathing normally and back with us. We're thankful that Ruth is here with us and, and inspiring us with her energy and, and grit. Lord, we ask that you be with Candy and Tom as they care for one another and as they move forward in this battle against cancer. Be with Lois and Lynn be with Diane. Lord, be with Fern as we've learned that her ward is locked down in COVID isolation again. She struggles so. Lord, be with her and comfort her. Be with Doris and Carol and Sarah. Be with Pamela and Brittany. Be with Lil and, and Ruth and, and Jake. Be with Sue as she heals from that her shoulder and then the fall and injury. Watch over Sean and Lynn and all those who are in our hearts and on our minds. Lord, you do work wonders in our world. And in this season of Advent, we wait for the wonder of wonders that you would come into our world as a little baby. Remind us, Lord, that there is no limit to the extent that you will go to to claim us and to meet us, and to have us know you. Lord, remind us that in the, the struggles and in the losses, in the, the ambiguities and the hard times and the questions, Lord, that you are with us and that you're leading us forward and that we are not destined for loneliness and, and separation, but we're destined and called together and to be united and to be one joyous body in the presence of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, both now and forevermore. Lord, we are united, united in God's love. And that brings us a joy that nothing can unravel. It's in these promises and in these truth in the flesh, in Jesus, as our Emmanuel, that we now come with the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I do want to apologize for last week missing our, our prayer list. I just had a mental jump. We started it and then I just finished it. So uh, I apologize for that. But the Lord always knows our prayers before we say them. But we have wonderful things going on in the life of our church. We have decided and made a commitment here at Forsyth Presbyterian to be uh, participate in all of our denominational uh, offerings. There are four of them. We would be called a four by four congregation that we do all four. And at Christmas we have the joy offering. This is an offering that is taken in order to, to build up 
the leadership in our, our church, the leadership of the past, leadership for the present, and leadership for the, the future. It helps with the care of, of retired church workers and missionaries. It also it provides scholarship for their children and for ethnic uh, colleges and university, particularly the, the Tuskegee Institute and Stillman College. Uh, and uh, uh, for the present, that's for the future. And for the present, it, it helps those pastors and church workers that are experiencing uh, particularly health issues and loss of uh, opportunity, disability, it also funds them as well. Uh, uh, the one we have, it, this is uh, Walter, uh, 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 oh, no, not maybe Walter. This is Jack uh, Ellison. Uh, he's a retired minister from Minnesota, and he is one of those retired that are receiving benefits through the joy offering to help make ends meet for the, the later years of he and his wife's life. So we will collect this offering uh, mainly on Christmas Eve, but uh, uh, throughout uh, December, we will have some envelopes if you'd like to take one and make and participate in the, the joy offering of the Presbyterian Church USA. Now this is maybe more important, and this is where I have to, to, to tell you that I have missed an opportunity in this time of, of pandemic and the distractions and the uncertainties. I have, have waited longer than what we have in the past to initiate our pledge campaign. There are a couple of reasons, this mainly for the pandemic and not knowing exactly where we're going. One of my missing and not quite adapting to the new structure we have in the session, which I believe is good. I just haven't made my own cognitive connection yet. So here we are together moving forward. We're going to start our pledge campaign in December rather than the 1st of January. Let me explain another reason why we are doing this. It is a difference that I believe, and I hope that you're beginning to, to share and that you're hearing in our, our leadership, in our preaching, and, and in our messages, that stewardship isn't just for the month of November and December, but that stewardship is something we do all year long as we reflect on God's blessings upon us. Stewardship is an act of, of gratitude, of returning to God in gratefulness for the bounty that God has, has placed uh, upon us. And so I've, I've worked to try to, to shift, to dislodge this message of stewardship from just a once a year message to being year round in the opportunities that we have to give in mission and caring through the gifts that God has given us. So I hope that you're connecting with that with stewardship. But, but, we do have electric bills to pay and the heat bills to pay and this real world need for a plan. And we call that plan a budget. At this time, we're asking you to prayerfully consider making a pledge of how you can support our church in the coming year. As often as I joke sometimes with our session members that they've signed this in blood, this pledge is not in blood. If things change for you, they will change for us. If, if you want to make it, and then you can't, we live in that. That, that's the way we all are, aren't we? we none of us know quite what uh, tomorrow is going to bring. Uh, I think all of us probably financially, uh, if you're at all aware of what tomorrow will bring. But 
this enables us to make a plan for how we move forward in the future. So I apologize that we're starting late this year and on this day would be ending our plan program instead of next week starting our plan. Uh, is, this, is this my fault? But I hope that we'll solve it together. So next week we will have a, 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 a cards and make information available for you to prayerfully consider making your, your pledges. Um, I'm, I believe that we, we will be able to have a, a clear direction for the future through this information. And maybe the Lord bless us that in this later date, maybe that will help us to also know where we're going. But my friends, I believe we're going together into our future. And I sure want you to come along with us because our ministry is bearing fruit. We're, we're making a difference in our community and I think we're making a difference in our hearts together as well. So uh, please consider making a pledge as we move into that part of our program. A, a couple of other uh, announcements I have to, to share with you. One is the poinsettia list. Now here it says they're gonna be ordered on December 1st. That's not gonna happen, I don't think. But if you want to order poinsettias to decorate the sanctuary for Christmas Eve in honor of someone or in memorial of, for someone, we have these uh, forms in the back that you may take and fill out and leave for uh, our office manager, Mrs. Finky, so that then she can collect them and order the poinsettias for Christmas Eve. Uh, these are sitting on the back table as you come in if you would like to uh, 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 have poinsettias. Even if you don't have your check today, but you know what you want, I would suggest that you fill this out and place it back on the table, and then I will make sure that Mrs. Finke gets these tomorrow, uh, <clears throat> if this is what you would like to have. Still, take this and fill them out, bring them back next week, and we're going to, to make this happen. But <clears throat> this is available for you. The other final thing of these long announcements, uh, I, I hate to mess up our rhythm this way, but uh, it is uh, at our trivia night, I won the Christmas basket. And I've decided I want to double dip. And so I'm going to raffle it off to you again. And uh, so we have the, the basket out there. I, I, I will have someone with raffle tickets, and I hope that you will uh, uh, try to win my basket. It's, it's a great basket. I, 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 it has beautiful decoration, blanket, uh, uh, just all kinds of Christmas uh, uh, joyful stuff. So uh, I'm challenging you to, uh, try to try to win my basket. Are there any other announcements? God bless you, and thank you for being patient with me. Let's sing the doxology. Uh, let's stand together and sing the doxology. Thank you, Ellen. As I often say, if Walmart can play Christmas songs, so can we. Let's uh, remain standing and conclude by singing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Let's sing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
My friends, we have our griefs and our losses. We have times where our hearts hurt and the tears flow. But we also have times where we are transformed, transformed by possibilities of, of love and opportunities of hope. And in those possibilities and opportunities there is joy joy for you and joy for me and a joy to be shared with our world in this advent season go out and share the joys of christ jesus now may the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen to go 40 feet. There we go. Takes a second. <laughs>